Thank you everybody for tuning in today for Woodcraft's demo. And we're gonna talk about miter gauges today. Miter gauges are very important for the woodworker because they allow us to cut precise angle joints, 90 degree joints, 45, 22 and a half. It's something that we could use to hold the wood in a safe manner, exact cut. Uh, plus we can also use it for repetitive distances. If you wanted to make a picture frame that was 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches by 10 inches, it helps if you can have your miter gauge specifically do a perfect 10 inch length every time you use it to cut. So what we're talking about in a miter gauge is a couple different things. This is the INCRA SE1000. This is the one I use in my house. It does a very, very good job. Uh, you're gonna have a miter slider that's gonna slide in the miter slot of your table saw. You're gonna have a fence that you're gonna put your wood against to hold it flat and in a safe manner. This also has uh, tracks that you can attach clamps to actually clamp your wood to the fence. You don't really wanna clamp the wood to the table because then you could move it. So you wanna have something that can clamp it to the fence. For repeatable cuts, you're gonna need some type of measuring system. This has been set for this particular saw and it's very easy to do. This is our mobile stop. And the nice thing about this is we adjust this so that the measurement here is exactly the same distance from the tip of this little metal rod to the tooth of the saw blade. So now if I wanna make something 10 inches, I slide this till this bar is at 10 inches and we're good to go. Also, if I've got a little piece of wood that's a little bit bigger, I can with this uh, use the tools that come with it and adjust this out a little bit. This has got, like I said, an up-down slot. Now, this little bar is adjustable. These hold it in place. And these keep these together. So this really works well. If you needed a little extra room, instead of measuring from this side, you can take this bar off and then make two smaller, shorter bars. You can attach those here and just flip one out of the way and you can measure from the back if you needed that couple extra inches uh, for your tool. You're also gonna want something in the miter bar that's going to allow you to adjust this for side to side movement. And this is what does uh, this for the increase. Last but not least, you see some bars have something like this on the tip. It's gonna look like this or it's gonna look like this. This goes in the grooves in the miter slot so that this can be back here and not fall off. Because if you've got a wide piece of wood, this has gotta be able to go back far enough, but it's gotta stay in place. Otherwise, you'll never be able to use this with this. And then it just slides forward. That the metal bar comes very, very close to this, but we don't want it touching, especially in a saw stop because this will fire the cartridge. But any table saw, you want this to be uh, a very short distance from this. Now, most people don't understand, but sometimes when you cut into a piece of hard wood with the blade, the blade flexes. If you have it so, so very close, you can literally cause this to fire by blade flex. If the blade could flex, touch this, it's gonna fire. So wood is a good standardization for width. I like to use two business cards. You could use four business cards, two business cards, you, anything that you want, put them together, and then you're gonna between them, the saw blade and this, and you're just gonna slide this over till it touches, lock everything down, and then you've got a uniform distance. The measurement is from the side of the tooth on the saw. So I took my measure, uh, my ruler, came down here to the touch the tooth, made a set distance here, and then our adjustment for 
for this is these controls here and this, and we can move this whole red part of this assembly back and forth until everything lines up. Um, one of my, this is one of my favorite ones. Now, like I said, I've got this at home. There's another brand Inker makes called the uh, Miter HD. This is the 1000 SC. The Miter HD and the 1000 SC are exactly the same, except this is in five degree increments. The H HD is in one degree. So it's a little bit more precise if you're going to be using non-standard measurements. Five degrees is normally perfect because you're going to do 45s, you can do 90s. Uh, the only special one is 22 and a half. And those are here, 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 and here. So that's what if you look, these, these are just cut real fine. That's for the 22 and a half degree joint. So how do we get this set up? You want a kit that's going to give you a good instruction manual. And they, they all pretty much do, but this is something that, nice color pictures, that it's a precise tool. So you have to know how to adjust it precisely. Uh, one of the things I like to do is once I get this set as a perfect 90, all this is set up, then it makes it much easier when I swing it, it stays within that perfect uh, circle. So when I do a 45, this is a perfect 45. So to do that, we just loosen this. We turn it till it says 45. You'll see that this little piece with the tooth is what goes in and it locks this in place. So that's at a 45. So if we've got this set for 90 and it was perfect. When we go to 45, it's still perfect because we're basing everything on our base measurement of a 90 degree. One of the things you want to be careful of if you swing it though, is to make sure that the fence is still clear of the blade. And you can see that it's not. So when you move something on the fence, don't forget to come back and readjust this so that it is missing the blade. And in this case, we wanted to do the same thing we did before. We want to take our tool that came with our miter slider. We're going to loosen up these nuts for a fence in place. We would take our two business cards, if that's what we used, put them right here, bring this forward until they touch. Since we use the same point of reference from the saw blade, this is still the same. That's still 10 inches. As long as we use the same point of reference when we space this out. We're done with all our cuts. We want to go back to 90. We just loosen this up, loosen the fence up. Loosen our handle. This will have us pivot. Take the locking key out. Slide it to 90. In this case, zero. Lock everything back in place. We get our little business cards, put them in here, bring this up. Lock this down, and here's our repeatable cut. Now, did it stay at 90? You should always have something that you know is guaranteed square. This is guaranteed square about. Put it here, 
take it to the blade, make sure that we're not touching a tooth because we want just the disc and that is square. So we're good to go. So this allows us to do repeatable cuts, precise, precision, repeatable cuts. What you're looking for and all these good ones have it. You don't have to go as expensive as this. This is another incrementer gauge. Same basic thing. Locks it. Just locks it in place here. Five degrees except for the 22 and a half and the 22 and a half. So this does the same thing, much less price. Instead of a fence, what you do with this one is you get a flat piece of wood, you've planed it, put it on the joiner, make sure it's flat, run it through the planer, make sure the other place is flat and parallel, and you just screw it into here, and this is your variable fence. As far as this fence, since it's wood, you make it longer than you need, make it longer than you need. And when you make the cut now, now this fence is a zero clearance. It's exactly where the blades are gonna cut. So if you, this is something where you can also put your own stops. You can put a groove on top if you want that you can hook flips on with one of the channels on uh, clocks. You can just make the fence as elaborate as you like. Same thing, taking it to 45, this loop is up, swings and off you go. This also has the, uh, you want to take out this wiggle, and you do that by turning these screws here, expands the plastic rings, and you want it so it slides easily, but you don't hear that. That's what we did to this. We adjusted these plastic rings. It slides easily but there's none of that noise. This is just a good, good fit, and it's gonna stay that way. Like I said, once I do this, then I adjust this, then I take it to the square to make sure everything, and I'm using the disc of the blade, not the teeth, because the teeth are on the outside of the disc, but there's no standardization. It depends on how the carbide reacted to the sharpening system. Measure from the disc so you don't have the teeth in there. You'll see that even miter slides, miter gauges from other manufacturers, you still have these same basic components to keep this from falling off. Your fence, your movable stop, your flip down. What you're going to do with this, here's your tape here and you can move the tape, adjust it, so that you have it from the, this part, this is moved so it's right against the fence, right against the blade. Do the same thing. Get our two business cars or whatever we're using for our spacer. Lock them in place. Now this is right where we want it. So if we set this, want this to be 10 inches, we take this right here to 10 inches, lock it in place, and there we go. And this flips up out of the way when we don't need it. So all of these have basically the same basic idea, a long bar, a way to keep so this so that it won't fall out. Because if we have a wide piece, we're gonna have to start it from back here off the table. The Wood River one here. This is our little guide. We can unlock and move this around. And 
this one, this little knob in back goes into these holes. So once you get it set up, take that off. And then when it gets to the hole, it'll clip right in. Easy, repeatable cuts. You know, that's what you're looking for. So to summarize, on a good miter gauge, you want something that's easily adjustable, gives repeatable, accurate cuts. If you're going to do picture frames, anything that needs a precise 45 degree miter, it's got to be exact. This is where you want to spend a little bit more money and get something that is really dedicated. Look at the beefiness of this as far as holding together. This does an excellent job. This is all the average weekend woodwork we need and do a great, great job. But if I want to go a little bit extra, then I'm going to go something like this. If I really want total control, just dead on accurate, then I'm going to look at the HD, which has got un one degree increments instead of five degree. Um, if I don't need anything this special, all I want is something that's put together well and works and lets me come up with the fences I need and how I want it, this is perfect. I attach my own fence to this. Could be a wooden one, could be a metal one, just like any of these. This gives you more choices. Actually make this work by uh, just getting a little bit more involved with the fence and what you need. So that being said, you're looking for something that's going to slide over the base pretty well. You'll see that this is metal on metal. This has got a pad to run on. This has got a pad to run on. So it's hard for stuff to get under here and mess this up because that pad keeps everything clean and clear. Price-wise, the more features you get, of course, the more it's going to go up. This one, where you do a lot of the adjusting, is $75. This one, that's taking some of that out for you, it snaps into place. This one is $100. This one, that's just as accurate as the day is long, nice heavy heft to it. This one is basically $200. So, while it's easy to get sticker shock, this is an awesome one. Like I, this is the one I use in my own shop. I've looked at all these. I've got all kinds of different miter gauges. This is the one that really worked the best for me. Uh, you're going to get all kinds of extras in one of these kits, if it's a good one. Extra measure. The tool, a wrench to open these nuts. You're going to get wrenches for adjustments. Remember I told you about this bar, you can get a smaller bar, little small bars here. If you want to use the full width of this for measurements, here they are. Extra washers, extra nuts. For the miter gauge itself, so it doesn't move around in here, you've got extra split washers that you put in the gauge if yours wear out. A good instruction book. What you need to add to this is you need a good ruler and a good square. With those tools, you can set up any of these things and get into production. So if you need something, a, a dead angle, dead 45, dead 90, this is what you want. Well, thank you very much for watching and have fun woodworking. <laughs>